Hey guys, this is Billy from Adult Cello, and today I want to do a little troubleshooting with vibrato. So, a little while back I did my Q&A with you guys, and it was I got so many great questions. I actually ended up getting more and more uh, questions via email. A lot of them had to do with vibrato, and the more I looked at them, there were basically two main issues that everyone who contacted me is dealing with. I remember dealing with them myself. They're very difficult to work through, but it is possible. So. Let's take a look at the top two issues with adult learners learning cello vibrato and how to solve them. All right, issue number one is what I call hummingbird vibrato. Demonstrate it really quick. It looks kind of like that, or even... Okay, <laughs> things are moving a lot, but the vibrato itself is very narrow, it's very tight, and it's usually very fast, and it's not really controlled. You can't slow it down, speed it up. What it feels like, along with looking like, is basically that everything's kind of locked up, and so the arm, the wrist, the finger, the hand, everything's just kind of moving quickly because there's a lot of tension. If you were gonna describe what's going on, it's basically there's just way too much tension in either the fingers, the wrist, the, the elbow, the arm in general. And even if you've done the vibrato exercises that people prescribe and you've even got them down so they feel pretty comfortable, if you have too much tension in these areas while you're playing, like say you're playing a piece, the hummingbird vibrato is gonna come out out of nowhere and surprise you unpleasantly because it, it just becomes impossible to get that wide beautiful vibrato. This hummingbird vibrato that I'm talking about right now was actually also uh, featured last week when I showed you guys my uh, first ever public performance. It's fascinating because, you know, there are times when I'm watching myself in that performance and I'm actually seeing my, you know, my arms moving pretty, you know, widely and my, even my finger looks like it's moving widely, but then if I zone in right on the fingertip itself, the part that really needs to move, that was not moving. And that's why I saw a lot of activity with my left arm, but I wasn't hearing much vibrato. And that, that happens all the time. Is I think part of it is you just, you're thinking about playing the note and you, you're about to shake your arm so you think, okay, I better like squeeze because I don't wanna like, you know, start to vibrate and, and you lose your spot and it just like goes crazy on you. So you squeeze extra, but by squeezing extra, you're adding tension and that, you know, basically is gonna cut out the vibrato you're trying to do. So what can we do about this? So the number one thing that helped me was reframing how I thought about vibrato. You know, the, the finger motion is so novel. We don't do this in any other walk of life, especially as adult learners. And so you get really obsessed with like, ooh, like look at this and this is so cool looking and all this stuff. And so my, your mind's eye, at least mine, when I was learning, was so focused on the fingers, the fingertip, and the hand in general, that helped to some degree because it's true that you need to develop finger flexibility. Where I was really limiting myself, however, was in my elbow. My arm actually looked probably pretty balanced and like in a decent position, but I was holding and gripping my elbow kind of like I was doing like a bicep flex. And so by doing that and holding my elbow so tightly, I couldn't like pump my arm and I couldn't get, you know, a, a wide vibrato even with a relaxed finger. So what you have to think about is that the finger is kind of like the wheels on the road, okay? They need to be flexible and they need to grip the road so that if you go over a bump, you don't, you know, fly off the road. However, the motor that's driving this thing is the arm, okay? So tension in the arm is going to create the hummingbird vibrato, even if you get relaxed fingers, all right? So there's two spots. In you can be tense a lot of places, but the two biggest spots, I would say, joints of the finger and the elbow. So when you're practicing your vibrato next time, if the hummingbird vibrato is an unwanted feature of your sound currently, what I would do is practice and then try to really send your mind's eye to the fingers and also to the elbow and just think, am I gripping there? And then, you know, stop, be very patient with yourself, 
imagine kind of undoing any tension you might have in that elbow, restart, see if you're, the minute you start doing it, you might feel it actually grip again instantly, and then you're like, oh, okay, I am gripping there. So it's just careful analysis of what's going on inside your body. That's what's gonna help you get past this. All right, and the second issue is not being able to speed up the vibrato. It's what I call kind of walking versus running. I definitely struggled with this. So I got to the point where I could do a slow vibrato that was pretty relaxed and comfortable. Just kind of like, like a, a vibrating bed set on low, you know, and it just like kind of goes like this. But if I tried to speed it up, it would get really uneven and then I would get kind of like hitches in it and then eventually something would just tighten up so much that I would go back to hummingbird vibrato. So I'd get... And I just would get... Things would just kind of get weird <laughs> and, and tighten up and then send me back to problem number one. All right, so what can we do about this? The solution is to, once again, reframe the way we're approaching vibrato. In this case, we need to group the oscillations together and then we're going to start sending like pulses and then we're going to vibrate in groups okay so what i was doing before is just kind of individually making each wiggle happen which is why it worked at a slow speed but if you try to speed that up it, it doesn't work because you can't it's the difference between walking and running that's why i call it that they're two totally different strides okay so you have to eventually, to get that higher speed vibrato that's still wide and, and nice sounding, you need to send impulses and then group the amount of wiggles. So I usually would group four wiggles together or six wiggles, or oscillations if you want to call them that. So, so what that looks like is this. In my brain, I'm literally thinking one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So one gets the, the pulse, the like, okay, go for the vibrato. Two, three, and four are just a continuation. So it's not one, two, three, four, like make them all happen. It's ba, 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 da, 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 da. And if you do six, da, 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 da. Okay, so I'm, you're, so now your brain Instead of thinking, go, 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 you know, for each wiggle, you're saying, go, 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 da, 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 ba. And so it's, it becomes more of like a kind of a ball bouncing over and over again. You don't, you don't have to feed energy every single time. So th this is the way to kind of solve this problem with not being able to speed up the, the vibrato. Eventually you know, there's this huge range of colors and, and width and, and, you know, kind of effects you can do with vibrato. So I'm not saying that every time I play, I'm like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. But it's just the way to start grouping the motions together so that you don't tighten up because you're asking the impossible from your arm. This whole issue kind of reminds me of Forrest Gump in the, in the start of the movie when he's got the leg braces on and those bullies are, you know, throwing rocks at him and she's like, run forth! And he has to go and he starts escaping but with the braces on and they're gaining on him and it's not looking good and then somehow he just, out of abject terror, he learns how to run and the braces like fly off and then he just takes off and it's just clear that, you know, if the braces had stayed on, there was, it was not gonna be a good ending that day. So you just have to make the switch from a walking kind of mentality and a walking stride to a running stride. And that'll set you going. So anyway, I hope that helps. Um, I, things are getting pretty busy. I'm not able to get back to everyone individually with emails. So I hope that helps you if you emailed me about your vibrato issues. And thank you so much. Please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you next week.